Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Oh my goodness, it's almost midnight. I'm usually sawing logs by this time of the day, but uh, I wanted to stay up and do a project. Everyone else is watching football. Um, so what I've done here is a one sheet wonder card, and if you've never done these before, I never have. It's so much fun. So what you do is you chop up like a 12 by 12 piece of paper, and you get as many cards as you can from it. So I'm going to start with this. Um, let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, so here's a very simple one, some seashells. This one's got my little scrap of paper and a little fishy. Here we get another fishy with that same scrap of paper. So you use a little bit of that paper on every card. It's just a plain cheap white card base I made with cheap Walmart card stock. Um, here I use three pieces of paper and you know stamp some seashells. Um, got our fish and a couple little circles from paper. More of the seashells. And here I'm kind of liking this. I'm going to show you this technique with um, watercolor pencils, how to get this really cool stamped image um, with multicolors. And I really like the way this crab came out. Um, and I did the crab a couple different times, and I played with this technique. And I think you're really going to um, enjoy learning it, as well as learning how to do a one sheet wonder card. Um, so look at that. Hey, whoops, that's upside down. A whole stack. There's 11 cards there um, using one 12 by 12 piece of paper. So when the challenge came along on the Oriental Stamp Art, and there's my little matching envelopes there, and I actually thought about taking the scraps from the from my envelopes and adding them to the cards, which would make a lot of sense um, and be very, very frugal, but it wasn't really in the spirit of the One Sheet Wonder card, so I didn't do that. Um, so at Oriental Stamp Art, they had a challenge to make a One Sheet Wonder card, and since I've never done it, I just had to try. That's my ponytail holder. <laughs> I'm full of fancy frame, my hair's down, it's almost midnight and I'm making cards. What can I say? So I found a paper that I liked from a stack of 180 sheets from Can Company. It was this uh, swirl and I thought it looked pretty um, Asian themed. And then I thought, well, how am I going to cut it up? I've never done this before, what am I going to do? Then I thought, well, back in the day when I scrapbooked, well, I still scrapbook, but back when I used to use 4x6 photos, I had these awesome templates to do color blocking, and it was great to cram a lot of photos in a page. You know, you could crop your photos into circles or rectangles. You could um, cut cool papers into these other shapes or just, you know, cut cardstock and stick some buttons or embellishments on it. And I have quite a few of these. And so I grabbed a few that I thought would have the right size square um, to use in cards and um, I just trimmed my paper to that. I just traced it on the back of my paper and I trimmed it out so I had all these shapes. Now you could cut some of these shapes in half if you need smaller sizes. Um, if you had, if you needed like a punched out shape, I just punched some out of the sizes. You, you know, you wouldn't even have to leave that border. Um, so that's how I cut out my paper and that's how I made my cards. So if you want to try a one shoot wonder card, see if you have these old templates. It makes cutting them a snap and hey, you're using an old supply that probably hasn't seen the light of day in the last five years. <laughs> Mine has this is I've been printing um, printing at home and my 4x6 photo tray doesn't work in my printer. Um, so I've been just, you know, printing everything out in collages. So to do this technique that I showed you with the watercolor paper, I feel like I'm so scattered. That's what you get when it's <laughs> when it's close to midnight. Um, I, you know what I think I will do? Um, I'll either do the crab or the fish. Let me see. I haven't cleaned my stamps yet. I want to clean these stamps if you've been using like gelatos or watercolor crayons, watercolor pencils. You just want to uh, use a toothbrush and water to scrub all the pigment out of the, the crevices. Um, I think I will do the fish here. That's pretty easy. And I think I'll actually work on a blank card. I got this right here. I think I'll fold it just so I don't get uh, ink or anything on the back. Um, hopefully it won't, hopefully it won't open up on me. That's pretty flat. All right. So then to color your card, what you're going to do is, um, I actually like to kind of brush a little water on it. And I have some color there from underneath. I might just wipe that kind of try to scrub out some of the old color and wipe it off just to start with a clean slate. Okay, so my stamp's a little bit damp. It's almost perfect. And then um, what I'm going to do is actually uh, wet the tip of my watercolor pencil. And these are Aquatone and they're a woodless watercolor pencil. And they're kind of in between a watercolor crayon and a watercolor pencil. Um, so you want to kind of have it so you can see your stamp design really well, but you don't want it really filling in. Like, I don't want it filling in the uh, texture. I don't want it filling in the holes of those those scales. I just kind of want it around there. And I just have a little tin of 12 um, Aquatone pencils. I think it comes, the most you can get is 24, I think. Um, and that probably is a really good range. I know it's like, it doesn't have like, um, like a crimson red. It's got this kind of um, like vermilion color. 
um, and it doesn't have like an ultramarine blue. It's kind of got a Prussian blue and a, like a cobalt or cerulean blue. So I bet the set of 24 has a really, um, really responsive color range. I was actually been using these because I've been wanting the, um, the ink tents pencils and um i just you know i have so many supplies that don't get used that much these pencils would be you know case in point that i thought i really ought to um i really ought to use the stuff i have before i go buying new and i'm actually adding a little bit of a little bit of black here just to define and a little bit of prussian blue because blue is the opposite of orange and it will just give me a really cool look and then uh, you know i could add a little gold gelato or something if i wanted to now to zoom out so I can stamp it down. You can see I got a little speckle on my cardstock, but I'm not worried about that. I think I'm actually going to give this little spritz of water before I do it. But what I'm going to do is spray in the air and then I'm going to kind of swoosh my stamp through it so I don't get a lot of water on there. Kind of like when you spray perfume and you spray it and then you walk through it, kind of like that. So let's see, I stamp this so it's right side up for you. And this can be hit or miss and sometimes like your second impression is better than your first. All right, so now I've got, a, I've got my basic uh, my basic shapes here, my basic shape, my basic line work. Now, something that I really like about this, because I'm working on just plain cheap cardstock, I could take my brush and I could pick a color from my, um, from my pencil. You've seen me do that before. I'm very mellow. My goodness, it's... <laughs> It's midnight. And I'm just gonna throw in some color. And the um, since it's just cheap paper, the uh, some of the colors are already locked down into the surface of the paper, so I can paint over it. And it's really it's still keeping those original lines, but it's also kind of hit or miss, like with those lines underneath the way it's stamped, that it kind of has that nice, almost sumi e look to it, which I really like for this uh, challenge at Oriental Stamp Art. So that's why I wanted to use these fish stamps and kind of get that whole flair and that whole flavor of kind of a cross between the Japanese fish printing and the um, the style of sumi e painting. I thought it just made a really cool, it makes a really cool effect. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually loading up my, I'm doing two, two things for one. I'm loading up my brush, but I'm also speckling. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that blue in there because I think it just adds a little bit of... Um, surprise and it also just kind of looks cool. I can add a little def definition here and there and just give it that really nice watercolor look. Now something else I think is really fun is, um, now I tried stamping with the gelatos first and that was working all right, but I wasn't getting quite the look I wanted. So, um, so I, but I did like doing just the kind of swirly lines with the, um, with the gelato itself. So that's what I'm doing there. And I'm going to add a little bit of that just right from the brush of the uh, blue. I'll liquefy some of those lines. I do notice the Aquatone almost resists on the gelato a little bit, which is kind of cool. And then if I want to add a cool border, what I can do, I can do this with any of these colors. Like if I wanted to use this kind of color to make it look like the fish is swimming in a shallow area and it's kind of sandy, I can go over here with this uh, tan. What's it burnt? It's like a raw umber or yellow ochre kind of color. And the thing I like about these are woodless, but they actually are quite uh, durable. I keep, I'm like, geez, Lindsay, you were going to break those if you keep doing that, but they, they've held up to my abuse quite well. And then you can take a baby wipe, and this is a great way to, to uh, blend these colors. Just kind of go over them, go over the edge with a baby wipe. Now, so I'm doing this just as a one layer card because I totally used up my um, other pieces for the 11 one, car, one sheet wonder cards that I made. So, um, so that's why I'm doing this right here on the card base itself. Can you see that? There we go. I think we got that pretty well centered up. I'm going to do some flex of the, of the uh, tan too. Actually, I should probably keep those smaller. That way they would look a little bit more like, more like sand. Maybe I'll do some with this. Uh, see how the gelato works for speckling. That would be some pretty blue in there. You can also um, blot it off, blot the speckles off. My voice is funny this late at night, isn't it? I sound all husky. <laughs> when I was, uh, my first job in radio was to do this song, this uh, radio show called Love Songs and Dedications. And you had to talk all like mellow and this is very mellow. <laughs> That's probably why I worked the late shift. So the only time I could get my voice to do that. <laughs> All right, so there we got some, got some speckles here. This doesn't speckle as well, but I like that it. You get this is metallic. Actually, this isn't a gelato. This is a cheapo gel stick, uh, the kids version. That's like you know, 
for five bucks you get a set of six colors so that's kind of cool and then since i have this on my brush anyway and you know i just hate to waste anything i'm just gonna throw in just some more swirls so there you have that there's a card it was very quick look at that 10 minutes and i showed you how to do a one sheet wonder set of cards it's great to have these um on hand for you know just anytime you need to send a card and the cool thing is that this is all one layer so i can grab my sentiment stamps and i can stamp and even stamp over a couple layers i could stamp like a big you know thanks right across there i have room to and it's flat i can you know they're blank i can write on the inside but I, it's still flat so i can um you know stamp sentiments on there it's in this cute little portfolio the templates from green sneakers as are the templates for my cradleopes here um you can check that out at greensneakers.com i believe i'll put a link underneath the video eventually if i don't get it tonight it's because i'm tired i should be able to put a link up i'll try my best my gosh it's almost midnight give me a break <laughs> if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until next time happy crafting